New York, the human Roach Motel. Now, a man who is not paying attention, Dave. Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Nice to see you. Have you, are you like me? Do you have Olympic fever? Have you been, have you been glued to the set watching the Winter Olympics? <laughs> I thought this was interesting. Originally, before the Olympics began, there were going to be, I think, 64 teams. They said, we're coming. 64 teams from 64 different nations are coming to France to participate in the Winter Olympics. And then when the games opened up, there was one team missing, and that was, that was the team from Colombia. That's right. They had one guy on their team, and for some reason, he, he didn't show up. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? A guy from Colombia not showing up. He you, you don't suppose he's worried about passing the drug test, do you? I thought this was nice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Ah, uh, I know. M many of our audience members are not fully clothed. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, you know, Coca-Cola, I thought this was a good idea. Coca-Cola, each night that the Olympics are on uh, CBS, televised uh, all over North America, Coca-Cola, there's some kind of a contest, one of those scratch-off contests or something. Coca-Cola will give the winner of that contest a million bucks every night during the uh, course of the Olympics. And I figured out why they're doing this. They want Americans to know what it feels like to win something during the game. So that's <laughs> the reason. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I guess, I guess we are doing pretty well. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> Uh, well, the big New Hampshire primary is less than a week away, and I was reading the, uh, the Wall Street uh, Journal earlier today, and they're talking about campaign spending. Now, listen to this. The person in New Hampshire, the candidate who is spending the most money so far is Bob Carey. Uh, the next big spender is uh, Tom Harkin. And the third big spender is Governor Clinton from uh, Arkansas. But, but they believe that, Har that uh, Clinton, rather, will outspend everybody by at least two to one on Valentine's Day gifts. So that's... <laughs> That was in the Wall Street. <laughs> Look, Paul, happy people enjoying the show. <laughs> what, a, what a lovely sight that was. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on the... Uh... Hey, David Letterman, how do you do? Yeah, we got a crazy nutty show for you. All right, yeah. What are you doing? I'm doing my own tribute to the late Francis Fay, the nightclub performer from the 50s who used to do a thing like that. Oh, well. I hope well. that means a lot to everybody. Well, thank you very much. All right. I'm, I'm honored. honored that you would select the beginning of tonight's program okay. to do that. To do my own tribute to Francis When did he pass away? She was a nutty chick. Oh, see, I don't even know. Francis, yeah. I thought it was a guy. Francis when, Faye. when did Francis leave us? Well, not, actually, not too long ago, some, within the last year, and she was a very, very hip... Uh, Cocktail lounge performer, uh -huh. Francis Fay. She used to say Francis Fay, gay, 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 is there any other way? Yeah. And that gives you an idea of what her wow. act used to be. <laughs> but I didn't mean to. Let's let's all do our best now to get over our grief and go on yeah. with the show. I really I didn't mean to bring the show down. She would have wanted us to laugh and sing and party. Yeah, oh, she would because, have. Yes, she would All have. right, then, then we'll do that. We'll, we'll All right, do yeah, our best yeah, Francis uh, Faye, yeah. Uh, <laughs> passed away, did she? She did, but she was a nutty, <laughs> nutty chick. Right up to the end. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, uh, if you're like the uh, rest of America, you're probably hard in the throes of Olympic fever. Let's, let's take a few minutes tonight to look at the 1992 Winter Games from Albertville, France. <laughs> you know, the tribute to Francis Fay was longer than that. <laughs> Not, not as long as that. It was, no, it you was mean, longer than uh, that. Well, thank goodness yeah. it was. Uh, you know, many sports fans are fascinated by the strange and unusual events uh, featured in the Winter Olympics. For example, the biathlon, which combines cross-country skiing and rifle shooting. Well, this year, there's a new combination sport bringing together old favorites from the winter and summer games. It's the weightlifter ski jump. <laughs> That's right. 
like medalists are determined by combining weight and distance. Weightlifter ski jump. Francis would have loved that one. Would have been right up her alley. Here's, uh, here's another change in the Olympics this year. The traditional Olympic flag has been updated to more fully reflect the spirit of the games. Here's the new flag. There, see? <laughs> see, how, see, Paul, how that really more effectively yes, more, reflects yeah, the spirit more accurately of the, reflects the you game. You know, in the interest of world peace, here's more good news. For the first time ever, Iraq will be participating in the Winter Olympic Games, and here we see their downhill camel warming up. <laughs> Due to the overwhelming popularity of the Olympics, advertisers, uh, large and small, are eager to associate themselves with the games. Here's a rather unique exploitation. Watch if closely. If you or someone you love has been injured by a runaway bobsled, call me, attorney Frank Delfino, at 1-600-SLED-LAW. Do it today. Here's, here's exciting news now for people who love the Winter Olympics and the Summer Olympics and still crave more. The International Committee has announced an all-new group of games, the Autumn Olympics. Events will include hayride races, raking leaves, shucking corn, and my favorite, carving pumpkins. The Autumn Olympics. If, if you love the Summer Olympics, if you love the Winter Olympics, get ready for the Autumn Olympics. Interesting events in the autumn. This year's Winter Olympics include a number of sports that many Americans are not familiar with. Let me review some of these unusual events for you now. Here we go. Well, the biathlon, Nordic combine, luge, two-man bobsled, four-man bobsled, downhill thigh master, four-man dog shampoo, driveway shoveling, flu shot, vanilla ice bashing, mitten hunting, 10-man thin ice testing, uphill luge, two-man lambada, maple syrup chug, dramatic riding, go-karts, Nordic pie eating, BB gun fights, riding name in snow, the pantsless karaoke. <laughs> I'm a little dry from all that reading. I don't, I don't blame you. The Winter Games are broadcast worldwide to an international audience numbering in the hundreds of millions. Uh, let's take a second now to enjoy this Japanese television coverage of the continuing downhill competition. Okay. Yes, yes. General uh, Electric, the huge corporation that owns NBC, is also the proud sponsor of the 1992 Olympic torch. In fact, it features one of the many defective GE coffee makers. It features one of the many defective GE coffee makers. We're going to pause now for a... Uh, Paul, I thought, I thought we had something worked out for 92. Every time I had a beverage, there would be oh, accompanying yeah, we did, beverage we did. music. Give me one more chance. All right, all right. This is, I, I've had a beverage now three times tonight, and I haven't heard a thing. I'm sorry. I know you had your hands full I'm preparing sorry. that tribute. Francis Faye tribute, Francis yeah. Faye. <laughs> take one more drink. Very busy. Okay, That's take a drink. This is something new. You know, do you watch any of the uh, morning television programming? Of course, you have Good Morning America, uh -huh. and you have uh, the, the CBS morning uh, thing. What CBS they call it? This Morning. CBS This Morning, and then you have our own Today Show, which has been, by the way, on NBC for 40 years. And to me, that's like the most impressive thing to happen in broadcasting in the, in the history of television, that it's been able to sustain successfully for 40 years. That is amazing. So now, they're in uh, the, the CBS morning deal is uh, they had to go to France, and uh, Good Morning America, where did they go? Uh-huh. Wow, they went to Hollywood? 
Wow. <laughs> what do they well, they get flights out there now or what? How did and and but the Today Show has been in Cuba for the last two days. I now, to, yeah, to me that's unbelievable. And we we make a lot of fun of the producer of the Today Show, uh, Billy somebody, because <laughs> because he's 25 years old and he's just a kid and he has no idea what the hell he's doing. He's 25 years old. Yeah. And so when the Today Show hired Billy. The Good Morning America went out and they hired uh, an even, they hired like an 11 year old producer. Really? Yeah, he's the one who got him to Hollywood, but Billy somehow has got him down there in Cuba, and Cuba. I think that's a, a pretty amazing thing. Pretty nice, yeah. yeah. It's funny because a couple of weeks ago we were down there talking to, uh, what's her name on the show? What's her? Katie Couric, yeah. And, and, and I see Billy, the producer, and we had been making fun of him for like weeks and weeks and weeks because he, he's so young and knows nothing. And, uh, <laughs> And so I, he didn't say anything to me, but he comes up to my assistant, and I overhear him say this, Hey, hey, tell Dave he better cut it out. <laughs> so, he's so young that he has a very high, his voice hasn't even changed yet. Paul, let's hear that tribute to Francis Fay oh, again. No, Come on, no, let's no, hear a little no. more Francis of that. Francis was great. <laughs> and maybe... Our uh, first guest co-starred, uh, oh, this is a, a lovely woman and a talented actress. She was uh, with Steve Martin in the film L.A. Story and can now be seen on Broadway right here in New York in a uh, play called The Substance of Fire. Anybody seen it? Have you seen it? No, not yet. Have you seen it? You folks seen it? <laughs> if I find out you're lying about this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the program Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Uh, aren't you cold? You're, you're wearing those socks and your jeans uh, have some holes in them. Well, I'm working in theater now and you know. Yeah, but it's very, very cold outside. Do you know how cold it was this morning? Um, perhaps 18? Oh, I think it was colder because when I got up, I checked the temperature. It was like 11 degrees, 10 or 11 right. degrees. Yeah, nasty, awful cold. I'm just in denial, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> just in denial about yeah. meteorological yeah. conditions? Just in general. I oh, like to I live see. that way. Uh, Ah, uh, thanks for coming back. Tell me about the play. Uh, when did this happen? You weren't in the play the last time you were here, were you? Well, actually, the last time I was here was a year and four days ago. Yeah. And it was our first day of rehearsal. Uh, so there was nothing beginning. to speak of yet yeah. at that point. And then we did it at Playwrights Horizons. Right. And then we all it was went a big success there, I understand. It was, um, well, yeah, it was very nice. Yeah. Mr. Rich liked it, so. Fra this is Frank Rich? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Big Shot. <laughs> yes, I like him very much. Yeah, he, he works for that rag, the New York Times. That trash yeah. journalism, right. Uh, exactly. So, and it's going quite well for you. Yes. Now, is this your uh, first experience with big time uh, theatrical productions? Uh, well, n no. no. I mean, it's always oh, no. big well, you, you time. You were in Annie, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, I was, uh, years and years ago. I was in Annie on Broadway for a couple of years, and a couple of years prior to that, I did a play on Broadway called The Innocence, which was very uh -huh. serious, you know. So you're an old hand at this sort of thing. Oh, well, uh, okay, yeah. sure. And, and things, <laughs> things are going well? Yeah, things seem to be going well. Of course, I'll probably get hit by a car tomorrow or something. No, see, you, no, don't, don't even say that. You shouldn't, you shouldn't say that, because okay. this is the town where somebody watching at home will think, well, maybe she'd <laughs> she like that. that. You know? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'd I mean? be happy to help if I could. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, don't but, ever say things like you know, that. It's like when things are going moderately well, you expect, you know, something. Waiting awful. for that other exactly. shoe to drop. Yeah, yeah, That's I right. understand. I understand so. completely. Now, when you're doing these uh, shows, the live uh, theatrical productions, you yes. do you do like a matinee and you do like eight shows at night you or do something. Eight, eight shows every eight night. Eight shows a week? No, no. <laughs> it's insanity. No. <laughs> You start, um, you do a show Monday? We do a show where we have Monday off, and we have, yeah. we do a show Tuesday, Wednesday, 30, Thursday, Friday, and then we have two shows Saturday mm -hmm. and two shows Sunday. Yeah, that's a lot of work, isn't it? It is, but I really like You're it. You're enjoying yourself. I love working hard. Do, really do you ever get people in the audience who heckle you or who, who <laughs> talk to you or, uh... Um, well, there is one point in the play, um, well, I've never been actually heckled because, you know, it's Lincoln Center and everybody's very proper, <laughs> you know. Um, they all have great respect for the theater because it's like a temple, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, there, uh, what, last night actually, well, a, a few weeks ago, um, there's a point in the play in which Ron Rifkin, who plays our father, who's, uh -huh. like, remarkable, I should add. Ron Rifkin is good. I've said that for years. Yeah. Yep. Have you really? Yeah, I, well, he really is. He's very just, good. and he's, he's just wonderful. Yeah. 
He's, he's so damn talented. Anyway, oh, sorry. Well, anyway. Where, where do you think this is exactly? I you know, you know, you know the proceedings are being televised. Oh, they you? are? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought the Olympics sort of just shut everything out, you know? <laughs> oh, that's right. They pulled our plug for the Olympics. <laughs> Like over there. Yeah. No, anyway, so one night he, he does something in the play which is, you know, symbolic and indicative of, of something else uh -huh. that can happen. And people are usually gasp when they say, um, generally it's an older woman, um, she sounds like she's from Brooklyn, and she says, oh, that's the substance of fire. Ah, I see, yeah. And she yeah. feels she needs to inform yeah. the audience. It, it's, so we get that. Yeah. And it's, I have a bad case of what I call church laughter, uh -huh. you know, and the worse, the worse it gets and the more I try to suppress it, it becomes, it's really unbearable. That's right. yeah. And um, I generally want to leave the stage at that point. And of course, I'm the only one laughing. Yeah. Have you, have you ever done something, and we talk to people a lot about this who uh, work in live theater, have you ever done something you're, you're not supposed to do by design or by accident that for a few seconds kind of derails the, the storyline? Um, well, yes, I, I threw up one night. <laughs> <laughs> that derailed everything. Uh -huh. And uh, what, what, what show was that? That was when I was doing Annie. Oh, my God, I was going to say, I hope to God it wasn't Annie. Yeah, it was Annie. So... I, uh, I had some, well, no. Yeah. I ate something prior yeah. to Curtin that must not agree with And so, so what do they do? Well, the poor little uh, orphan is well... vomiting on stage. What... <laughs> oh, my God, Annie's got a hold of a bad clam. It would be bad porridge or mush, you yeah. know. But um, what happened was uh, Reed Shelton, who was playing Daddy Warbuck, said, um, oh, Annie, you don't feel well, do you? <laughs> Maybe you want to go take care of that. She'll be right back, Grace. Uh huh. Yeah. Someone and get then, Annie a mint. And in fact, <laughs> we should take care. Of get her a Bromo. But actually, um, a few of, of your crew members were working on the show then, and one of them may have even pro provided me with a bucket. Oh, see now that's 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 uh, that's the kind of behind the scenes show business story. Don't you want that, this kind of yeah, anecdote? We can all do without. Thank you. <laughs> A lovely you show. Ask. I know. I'm just. I'm just teasing All here. Right. Uh, let's, I'm fragile right let's now. Let's do a uh, commercial. You ever heard of Francis Fay? Oh, certainly. You're going to do tribute again? No, we. Yes, <laughs> yes. We. We may just do it again. We have to uh, pause. We'll be back with. Uh, Sarah. Sarah Jessica Parker is here. We have a. Uh, uh, lovely young boys and girls who have uh, participated in an invention contest, and they're here tonight with their inventions, and they'll be out, and they're going to show us uh, the inventions and how they thought of them. It's going to be a lot of fun. Is that right? I'd like to invite you to stick around, if you would. Really? Do you mind? I, would, I would be absolutely honored. Right, right. I might learn something. Yeah, you never know. You never know. Uh, now, tell me about your name, Sarah Jessica Parker. Yes. At, at what point did you decide, I want all three of my names? Do you have more <laughs> names? Um, no, that's it. Yeah. Just Sarah it's, Jessica it's, yeah, Parker. It's a beautiful name. It's kind of Thank an old-fashioned, really solid-sounding name. Well, that's the kind of girl I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that ain't what I've heard. <laughs> hey, easy, easy. Uh, but I decided to stick with it because that's the only name I had. Well, no, it's a, it's a perfectly beautiful name. But is there, was there, did your folks, when they gave you the name, did they encourage you to use all three names? Um, well, actually, I was named, I, I think, after my great-grandmother, Sarah. Mm -hmm. And um, I, my mother, when she was... Uh, a little bit upset with maybe some behavior on She'd my use part. both names. Sarah Jessica. Yep. And, uh, and then when I sent my very first resume out ever, we used all three names. I think we were just ignorant enough to think that it was the right thing to do. And it worked. And you it, got the and job. it worked, so it stuck. And that's, that's my name. Yeah. So, but, but without the Jessica, you would be Sarah Parker. I'd just be Sarah Parker. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's a beautiful name. I may be wearing different clothing. I might be a whole different personality. Or you might have your own line of frozen dinner rolls. <laughs> Sarah Parker. <laughs> um, now, uh, I just asked you this, and you said you enjoy uh, living in, uh, in uh, New York. You're yes. from Cincinnati originally, yes. I, I believe. And you lived for a while in uh, Los Angeles? Yes, I yeah. did. And uh, Los Angeles now, oh, they're having terrible, terrible, terrible rainstorms. Rain yeah. It didn't rain the entire time I was there. No. The entire time. How long did you live there? Four years. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, that's true. That's probably the way yeah. it was. In uh, fact, it did rain one night for about three minutes. I think I called everybody, uh -huh. and I said, you know, get up, look outside the windows. It's going to rain. It's <laughs> yeah. raining. 
and by the time the phone call was finished, it was gone. Yeah. So uh, I had that happen the first year I lived out there. It had not rained for six months, and then one afternoon in June, <laughs> the sky got really black, and it rained for about 20 minutes. Right. And and the the news and weather people were baffled. And, and <laughs> the only thing they could say it was some kind of fluke storm that came. <laughs> it came up from Mexico, and that's all they knew about it. It's very odd there. Well, there's no weather there. Yeah. I mean, it's a wonderful city, and I really am not one of those people that like. You know, gets do you, off do you on... miss it? Do you do you have fond memories of it? Do you I, have um, bad memories of no, it? No, I have very I have very warm feelings for the city yeah. of Los Angeles. Did you fact, enjoy I driving? I love driving. Yeah. I really, really. In fact, I miss my friends and I miss driving mm -hmm. because I get a lot of thinking done when I'm driving, yeah. and that might be the only time in my life that I think, <laughs> which explains my appearance and why I'm behaving like this. No, no. no. Um, but I, I, I just really do, and I love uh, I love the radio and I love talk radio yeah. and. Um, I just like it. Did you ever, did you ever go out to uh, dinner at a restaurant and had to, had to turn over your car? <laughs> you have to give the, yeah. the guy. Isn't that odd? That it's it's the most peculiar. Yeah. You know, and I, it was really strange because uh, when I, when I first moved there, um, I decided that there was a really, it was just a terrible waste of money. You know, two fifty. Yeah, it's crazy because the valet parkers, the guys will come in their little, little suits jackets. and take your car and just move it around the corner. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I thought, and then the other thing struck me was, it, it's a really strange relationship based solely on trust and you've never met the person in your life and the only thing I could like my only analogy is like when I moved to New York if I were going out of town say for a few days or a week or something and there was a I don't know a nice looking fellow walking down the street and I said you know what? here I got some plants and I got a cat could you <laughs> this is my front door key and this is my top lock could you just, just uh, look after just the, look after the yeah. stuff for a while yeah. and, and my jewelry could you tuck my jewelry away also yeah. because it's it's in the top drawer yeah and, and so the, there you go. The anyway. thing, when you, when you have your car, when the valet takes it around the corner, what I've learned is that the, the, the staff, the restaurant staff, the waiters and the bartender and the cooks and so forth, on their breaks, <laughs> they go out there and lean on your car and have a smoke. <laughs> yeah. Very, and very annoying. Weird elbow dents. Yes, exactly, <laughs> those elbow dents. That's exactly what bothers me. But you know, dings. Yes, el elbow dings or dents. Dings. Yeah. Uh, it's a new word I learned when do, I moved there. Do you have to run off now to go be on your show? No, I'm going um, I'm going to be your friend. <laughs> we we've been on the air for ten years. This has never happened. No one has ever offered to be my friend. Unless of course. <laughs> That's their loss. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, all right, well, Unless sure. Hang around. No, hang around. And if you okay. want, we can uh, look at the uh, kid inventors. We, we have to do a uh, we have to break here for station identification. We'll be right back, guys. <laughs> we'll be out here in a show. And then when we come back, and you can hang around. Yes. And we'll visit with the uh, kid inventors. Please, folks, come on back. We'll be right here. <laughs> it, it's fun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, I, I, I hope the Japanese are watching. Uh, these folks are from uh, Fowler Middle School in uh, Maynard. Did I say that right? Maynard? Maynard, Massachusetts? All right. Uh, and they've brought along their inventions for making life just a little bit easier. Hi, hi, boys. Nice to see you. You know, normally there's some young girls here, but it's just guys. Is, is this like a, a boys' school? No. Are you sure? Uh, it's not some kind of reform school or something. Like that? <laughs> are, are you bad kids? Is that what we have? And this is Sarah Jessica Parker. She'll be assisting this evening. A and you're you're awfully lucky. Uh, what is your name, sir? Tom Palola. Tom Palella. Palola. Palola. I'm very sorry I mispronounced your name. Tom, welcome to the uh, program. Have you been to New York City before? Um, no. Yeah? Are you enjoying yourself? Yeah. All right, good for you. Tell us a little bit about your invention there. Okay, it's a remote control car uh -huh. with a dust buster on it and a broom on the front. It's <laughs> just made to clean like lint and dust. And a remote control car with a dust buster on the front or the back? Is that back. the front or the back? And a, uh, like a broom on the, uh, what, the other end. Okay. And this is a prototype, and eventually, when it's in production, you'll hook it up to the family sedan? <laughs> no, it's just like a vacuum cleaner. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, Tom, go ahead. Show us how that works. Put some dust down there. Mm -hmm. How is, is, uh, is the house pretty clean where you live? <laughs> All right. Did you win something for your invention, Tom? No. Um, just... 
come here and um. <laughs> yeah, what a bummer. <laughs> wow. All right, Beck, can you turn it around and get the uh, dust buster on that? Because I think you're just kind of pushing it around that way. Turn, turn. <laughs> Yeah, well, we get the idea, and, and it must be fun to scare the cat, huh? <laughs> Here it goes, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah, it. Go get it, eat it alive. Nice job, Tom. We get the idea. Congratulations. Thanks for being here. Here's Sarah. Say hello to, say hello to our friend Sarah and Jessica. Okay. Uh, who is our uh, next uh, young fellow here this evening? Michael Geldart. Is that you, Michael? Nice to see you. By the way, I enjoyed that show MASH for many, many years. Uh, how old are you, Michael? Eleven. Eleven years old. Is this your first invention? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, tell us what the invention is, and then tell us a little about the, how you came up with the idea, the, the thought process behind it. Well, I kept on getting hit by snowballs, and I really, really hated it. <laughs> and I kept on, and I had to make them and throw them, make them and throw them. Your hands and, would get very cold. Yeah, yeah. That, that and um, I, I didn't have enough time. Yeah. And I had to get out. So you were really getting pounded, is that? <laughs> Did you ever think of maybe a BB gun? <laughs> Carry it right in there. <laughs> okay, so this is now to help you. This is like a catapult for snowballs? Yeah. All right, all right. It shoots three instead of one. Shoots three at a time. Okay, let's see this, Michael. Here we go. Now, again, you're using... Oh, my God. <laughs> you could have been killed. But this, this is, again, just the model, and then you have a, a bigger thing, and, and you, you carry that with you to school and, or put it in your front yard? And... Hopefully, I'll make, I'll make a smaller one that can fold up, and I'll use it, and I'll have, like, a million of them on it. Yeah, okay, good. Well, good luck to you, and, and good luck taking it on airplanes. Thank you. Michael Geldar, here. Uh, Michael Riley, is there a Mr. Michael Riley here? Michael Riley, do we have... A uh, Michael, uh, oh, oh, hi, Michael, nice to see you. In all the confusion, I nearly overlooked you. Uh, how old are you, Michael? I'm 11. Yeah, you having a good time in New York City? Yeah. What do you think of New York? It's okay. You like it better than Boston? Yeah. Oh, do you really? Yeah. Well, there's going to be trouble when you get home. Uh, what is your invention? My invention is the static stopper, because in the morning, I comb my hair, and my hair stands right up on end. Oh, I hate that, don't and, you? Uh, yeah. And when sometimes I just take some scissors and I trim a little bit off the sides. Right. So, so let me get this straight, Michael. You, you get out of bed in the morning and, you, and your hair is standing straight on end. So rather than comb it, you just take it off. It's not a, no, it's just, we're being silly here. So you've decided you found a way to combat uh, unruly hair in the morning. Yeah. Okay, show us this invention. What do you um, call it again? The static stopper. The static stopper. Here we go. And to keep it down, you don't really need water, so you put water in here. And okay, so it's loaded up with some water. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you squeeze as you brush. Yeah. Comb and squeeze. <laughs> Comb and squeeze. Oh. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> Let me see that. You know, also, you could use this if the kids are throwing snowballs at you, too. But here's, uh, here's Sarah Jessica. Would you like to say hello to her? Hi. Hi. That's, that's, that's incredible. All right. <laughs> Matthew Pomfret. Did I pronounce that name right, Matthew Pomfret? Matthew Pomfret. Uh, no. <laughs> would, you, would you kids mind changing places? Are you Matthew Pomfret? Yeah. Hi, Matthew. Nice to see you. And uh, how old are you? I'm 12. 12 years old. You go to school with these guys as well? Yep. All right. Is this your first invention? Um, actually, no. I made one in about third grade. 
And what was that? It was um, like a, a band, and I made it out of like beans and stuff in boxes. So. Uh, some kind of band made out of yeah. beans? <laughs> Um, a one-man band type. Of thing. Oh, oh, like an, a musical instrument, and you could make all kinds of music with it. Oh, okay, very good. All right, so you're no rookie then, are you? Uh, your invention tonight, Matthew, is what? A copy stopper. The copy stopper, and the purpose of this is? Well, I always used to take tests, and people used to copy my answers. And they used to get... <laughs> oh, sure. Once they got a load of that bean invention... <laughs> <laughs> this boy must be a genius. <laughs> so this is to prevent the other kids from cheating off your exam. Yep. And what you do is you put it on before a test, uh -huh. and then you just sit like this and take the test. Right. <laughs> very, very nice. And, and do the teachers mind having Zorro in the classroom? <laughs> okay, Matthew, nice job. Here's uh, Sarah, Jessica, Marker. Hi. Yeah, nice to you. Um, I, I think this will mean something to the kids later in life. <laughs> I have a feeling. Uh, a Matthew Loomer. Do we have a Matthew Loomer? <laughs> Hi, Matthew, it's you. Nice to see you. You've been looming there all night, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matthew, uh, you're also from the same school, and you're how old? Twelve. Twelve years old, and you, your invention is? Matthew spit out the gum. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, 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 think it's, I think it's part of his invention. Oh, oh I God, think. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it part of your invention? I'm trying to be absurd. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, okay. it's way too late for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so your invention is, is what, Matthew? The sink preventer. The what? The sink preventer. The sink. The sig. The sig. The sig preventer. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, it stands for sticky, icky, gooey, goo. Oh, 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 it's an acronym. Sticky, icky, gooey, goo protection, <laughs> protector device. All right, show us how that works. Oh, wow. See, it's so a... Yeah. Stick on the bottom of right. And the, the security officers run in and arrest him. Mm. Nice going. Thank you very much. Nice job. Thanks, kids. Thank you very much for being here. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Nice to have you here. Uh, we're going to pause. We'll be right back with Bob Starlock.